probably the greatest heckler of all time, Mr. Fricker. How is it going here in Oklahoma City, and how did you feel the Terps did? Well, we were in the Chesapeake Bay Arena this weekend, and Headlock Sheptock was doing the job he was supposed to do. He came within this much. He won every match this year except the last one. I, uh, I wish he had made it. We would have had our first finalist winner from University of Maryland since 1969. But we're not going to wait another 45 years till we get our next winner. He squeezed a lot of heads like grapefruits. Roly Poly Boly did well. Spencer the Condenser. We had Brown, what could he do for us, deliver that package. And we had Tyler Goodwin. He tried to get a good win. He will get some good wins next year. Watch out for the Terps and the Big Ten because we're taking no prisoners. Okay. Now, <laughs> what is your affiliation with Maryland Wrestling? How did you get involved with them? Well, my son wrestled with Todd Beckerman who uh, was an assistant coach with the Maryland Terrapins. I call them the Terrapins. It's a matter of opinion. And we go to the Caryland Arena, named after Kerry McCoy. Um, and Todd invited me to the matches, and I've been to everyone ever since. You are a lawyer by trade. Yes. Where did you first off? Where did you go to college? Undergrad. Well, well I went to the uh, universe to to uh, Case Institute of Technology and also um, the United States Military Academy. And there they used to call me Butt Kicker Ficker because I was king of the pits in hand to hand combat. That's your and then your sons wrestled as well, right? My sons wrestled. Um, both wrestled in high school, uh, Flynn at DeMatha, and then he wrestled in the Pac-10 for UCAL Davis for five years. What is your, you know, you look at your affiliation to Maryland. How did you get involved with Maryland? Just Todd inviting you to the, to the duels? Or do you live close to the University of Maryland, Col Maryland College Park? I've always lived in Maryland. I have a law office up the street. I've represented hundreds of students, faculty, staff, even a couple deans when they get in trouble. Um, I have always been a Maryland guy. I was in the Maryland legislature, and as a matter of fact, I'm running for state senate now, and my son Flynn, who was with me at the tournament, who wrestled, he's running for House of Delegates. We call it Fickers for 15, District 15. I look at, you know, what you do, and I, first off, I'm a huge, I celebrate the First Amendment, as do you, and I really like how your, your style, you don't ever curse, you stay within the bounds of the rules, but talk about your beginning, and, you know, you started as an MBA heckler, is that right? Well, I, I started uh, with the MBA. I didn't miss a game for 12 years. I sat in the front row behind the opposing team's bench, and I've got certain rules for what I say. I try to be loud, of course, and I try to, to distract the opposition. I found that saying the other person name is very distracting, but I, I don't swear, I don't drink alcohol, I don't make any racial or sexual comments, but if an NBA player was $75,000 behind in child support, I brought it up. When Charles Barkley said that he didn't like vegetables, I bring the vegetables to the game and say, Charles, you look radishing tonight. <laughs> when when uh, um, one of the players said that he was afraid of spiders, he was arachnophobic. Uh, I brought lots of big spiders to the to the game. We always had fun. I read the Jordan rules to Michael Jordan, written by Sam Smith, and Michael said he had never read the book, but whenever I ad lip, he'd turn around and shake his head. That's not right. So he read the book. You know, looking at uh, now on season tickets, the application for it, what does it say now when someone wants to be a season ticket holder for the NBA? What does it well, say? It, it has on the back of all the applications and indeed the tickets, the, the Ficker rule, which says that you can't interfere with communication between the opposing coach and his players during timeouts, that if you do, you'll be given a warning, and then after a warning, they'll, they'll kick you out of the game, and if you get kicked out of a couple games, then you'll be banned from attending. But I never said anything improper, and the, and the, the 
NBA uh, attorney told me that if I interfered by even saying, I love you, Phil Jackson, uh, that that was interfering. So, and I used to do commercials for ESPN, too. I would get up right behind Phil Jackson and say, Phil, you think you've got a good team. You should see the team they have on ESPN, too. <laughs> you have a lot of fun with it. First of all, how awesome is the First Amendment, by the way? Well, you know, I love the First Amendment. Thank goodness we live in a country where we can express ourselves. And I've been to many Olympics, and I sound off there and, and express support for the American athletes. Uh, it's a wonderful thing, and, and I, I fight to the end to protect the First Amendment. But keep it clean, guys, just because uh, there might be uh, people that would be offended otherwise. Best interaction with an NBA player. Give me that one. Who's your best? Uh, maybe, uh, maybe it would be worse. Give me your worst or best interaction with an NBA player. Well, uh, I remember when Charles Barkley was talking about running for governor of Alabama. So I said, Charles, before I vote for you, I want to know your views on education, health care, and NAFTA. He turned around and said, well, Robin, I do have a view on the death penalty. They should use it on you. <laughs> and the outfit, okay, the outfit. You got the shoes on, you like to stomp, you like well, to make I, a lot I of noise. I like the boots because in a lot of the arenas, I can actually move the floor. And I've been told by some of the referees to be careful because the mat is moving and they're not sure if it's the ref hitting the mat or not. <laughs> the horn. Tell me about the horn. Tell me about the horn when you blow the horn. Well, I like to blow the horn and I come up with some good rhymes like one, two, buckle my shoe, three, four, close the door, five, six, stick him quick, seven, eight, you're wrestling great, nine, ten, ref, say when. <laughs> All right, best interaction with a wrestling fan or a wrestler? Well, I've got to be very careful of some of the moms uh, of, of the wrestlers because if their son is getting pinned, sometimes they seem to want to blame me because I'm cheering for his opponent. So I've been slapped a few times. There's, there have been actual yeah, physical altercations? Yeah, yeah, well. Ever in NBA? I no, never in the NBA. But wrestling people. But in wrestling. Some of the they're crazy. Some of the moms are there and they're, um, their little boy is being hurt and put down. So they think I'm responsible. <laughs> This has no really one. happened. Yes, several times. Where at? Even though at, at some of the Maryland matches and in many of the high school matches. And I, I would never do anything back. I just, I just say, well, that doesn't hurt. Or uh, I'm the only thing you hit all day. <laughs> <laughs> all right, I'm a huge fan now. Talking to you makes me a huge fan. Do you have anything else for me? Well, we're looking forward to the Big Ten. And I don't want you Big Ten fans to think that you have to sit there like little church mice. Otherwise, Maryland Terrapins are going to come in there and we're going to run all over you. One last thing. What's your favorite <laughs> thing about wrestling? Well, I love the fact that the guys are out there by themselves. They've trained hard. They've done 500 push-ups a day. They're in great shape. They've They've given up a lot of things that most college students have. They need some support when they're out there, and that's what I'm trying to give them. They've worked hard. They deserve the rewards they get. Mr. Fricker, thank you for the time. Yes. Safe travels back to Maryland, and I'm a, I'm a fan now. Well, I'm a romantic. W-R-O-M-A-N-T-I-C. A lover of wrestling. Thank you. <laughs>